Did you know that an estimated 14 billion pounds of trash ends up in our oceans each year? Did you know that it takes 500 years for one plastic bottle to decompose? Did you know that 325 million tons of recyclable construction materials are thrown out by the United States each year? Hi, I'm Maria Abdelazim, and I'm Emerson Dickstein. Many of you are probably aware of these facts, and if they give you concerns about our environment, you are not alone. We are here to present a possible solution to this non-biodegradable waste, mycelium. So we just mentioned a word that maybe a lot of you aren't familiar with, mycelium. So out of curiosity, how many of you have actually heard of mycelium before? Nice, nice. Um, of all of you who just raised your hand, how many of you are aware of the fact that it's possible to grow sustainable bricks with mycelium? So, for those of you who aren't mushroom geeks like us, mycelium is the vegetative part of the mushroom organism that's composed of a network of interconnected filaments. Essentially, the mushroom is the fruit that grows out of mycelium. When mycelium is dry, it forms this really rigid structure that is stronger than concrete pound per pound, as well as fire and water resistant. With dried mycelium, it is possible to create biodegradable and cost-effective replacements for environmentally harmful materials such as bricks, packaging, leather, etc. We could even eventually incorporate non-biodegradable waste building up in our oceans into various mycelium materials. The possibilities are endless. I first learned about mycelium while participating in a summer program in New York. One day, we went to visit this workspace that was filled with these mycelium benches. Our guide pointed out that these come from mushroom materials and invited us to sit on them. And to be honest, I was completely skeptical of the idea of sitting on a fungus slab. I mean, I did not think it would be supportive. However, I got tired as this tour went on and I gave in and I was quite surprised with how sturdy it was. And to be honest, it was quite comfortable. So once the summer passed, it was time to participate in an interdisciplinary research project as part of the French baccalaureate program that both Emerson and I follow in school. I introduced the idea to research mycelium to Emerson. At the time, we had no idea we were beginning a project with global potential in terms of environmental sustainability. So you're probably wondering how a mushroom, which we commonly find on pizza or in salads, could possibly create a product that's stronger than a concrete brick. I know I was definitely skeptical when we first began this project. One of the main components of mycelium is the molecule chitin. Chitin is commonly found in the exoskeletons of arthropods, crustaceans, or in the cell walls of fungi. When chitin forms a matrix, which is essentially a grid-like structure with other composites or molecules of chitin, the resulting structure is very strong due to the weak interactions with other molecules. This is why when a mushroom pushes through the ground as it grows, it's able to do so without breaking. Chitin can also be found in the cell walls of mycelium. This increases the pressure, which is another reason why it's so strong and durable. Additionally, we can explain the fire resistance and buoyant aspect of mycelium due to these interconnected filaments that create these micro air pockets. Researchers working with mycelium manipulate these properties in order to create the sustainable products we mentioned before, such as bricks, packaging, leather, etc. So once we had done sufficient research on mycelium structure and properties, we decided to begin our own experimentation process. We even contacted a PhD student at Stanford who introduced us to some of the experiments that he was conducting with mycelium. After speaking to the student and seeing some of his own work with mycelium, we decided to begin our own manipulation of the biomaterial. We set our first goal to determine which sort of substrate or food to grow mycelium off of would be the most efficient in terms of speed growth and durability. We tested out a bunch of substrates, including flax seeds, sawdust, pringles, and even the energy drink monster. We would <laughs> test these out in different ratios and combinations to see what worked best. Fun fact, mycelium definitely loves pringles, 
just as much as we do. <laughs> the Pringle substrate was among one of the most effective, along with the flaxseed substrate, because of how quickly the material grew and how strong it was. However, we got so caught up with these really funky combinations that we didn't realize how complex growing mycelium would be. Yeah, we thought mycelium would be just as easy as growing a plant, but we were very wrong. Mycelium can actually be really difficult to grow because of how easily it becomes contaminated. So all of the materials we used needed to be sterilized, and all of our work had to be done under a fume hood, which is essentially a glass case that protects from outside contamination. And even then, we still ran into issues of contamination. But after three tries, we were finally able to perfect a sterilization method using the steam setting on an instant pot. <laughs> so once we figured out how to actually grow mycelium, it was time to test out these seemingly magical properties. And to do so, we actually compared it to a real concrete brick. So we were pretty psyched to throw bricks at Maria's window and blowtorch them in the name of science. However, before we could do this, we had to actually make a mycelium brick. To do so, a strain of mycelium is injected into a substrate, which is then all placed into a brick mold. The mycelium acts as a glue that binds the material together, and when the mycelium has grown for long enough, the brick is placed into an oven where the organism is killed so that it no longer grows. And this is also how many other mycelium products are made. After completing our bricks, we tested out the fire resistance. It was really fun blowtorching something in my kitchen. <laughs> I can also demonstrate for you the strength of mycelium by stepping on it. So there you go. Only a little bit crumbly. <laughs> but this is also the one that we destroyed by torching it, so not the strongest one. So once we were done testing out all these properties, we wanted to find an, engage an engaging way to present our research. We came up with this Grow Your Own Mycelium Brick Kit produced by our faux company, Myco Kits. We thought a kit really exemplified our research perfectly because it would allow others to replicate the same process we followed throughout these months of research. In our kit, you have everything you need to grow your own mycelium brick, a bag of mycelium, some flaxseed substrate that's already been pasteurized, and an instant pot. Um, a mold that we designed, and my personal favorite touch, this 70-page book that details our research <clears throat> and logs that we follow. This is essentially a scientific rendition of a cookbook dedicated to mushrooms. <laughs> and because we're very extra people, we also produce these business cards and MycoKids stickers. <laughs> So once we were done making our kit, we wanted to continue our work, so we reached out to the student at Stanford to see what else we could do. He put us in contact with a number of different students around the Bay Area, also interested in biomaterials, and we started talking about how we could collaborate on something together. After exchanging many emails and Skype calls, we came up with Biojam, a four-day pilot program that took place in August at Stanford. This program has a goal to introduce teenage girls to principles of bioengineering and biomaterial design with a focus on how we can incorporate cultural context and community engagement. So we're now working on different public workshops with the BioJam team with the goal of teaching students how biology impacts technology through different hands-on projects. So we just started a process of working with plastic eating mealworms in November, we held a workshop where we had students make styrofoam monsters inspired by their cultural backgrounds to feed our mealworms. It was really cool seeing all these kids super interested in mealworms and bioengineering. We are currently facing a global environmental crisis. We are talking to you today so that more people can learn about this amazing biomaterial and its potential role in addressing our um, issue. We are standing here today so we can raise awareness of mycelium. The more people who find out about mycelium, the more it can be implemented as a replacement for environmentally harmful materials, specifically construction materials such as woods that contain harmful carcinogens or other petroleum-based products. Some companies have actually already started doing this, like the well-known company IKEA. Not only does IKEA sell great furniture, Almost all of their packaging is made out of mycelium. We need to get more companies using mycelium like IKEA. 
The more publicity mycelium gets, the more investment will go into the development of this biomaterial and the scaling up of its production for broader commercial use. Never underestimate how big of an impact you can make, even if it seems trivial. I mean, who would have ever thought something as mundane as mushrooms would have such mind-blowing applications? Thank you.